Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The Baptists, in the name of old-time religion, didn't go back to the first century to grab their doctrine. They didn't go back to the Baptists of the 1600s. They went back to the Azusa Street Revival, and they grabbed their worship experience that those people were making their idol, and they took it into the Baptist church and said, well, we'll be like them. We'll just leave off the tongue-talking and we'll leave off the slain spirit. No, I don't want anything to do with being yeah. a Pentecostal. I'm a That's Baptist. Right. I'm an independent, yeah. fundamental, Bible-believing Baptist using a King James Bible. And I want to go back to the way Jesus said to do things. <laughs> Trying the spirits, whether they be of God. They got a spirit. They just didn't get the right one. That's it. Yeah. I want to say to these guys who are running laps to open the side door and say, keep going. Tell them all. Tell them. <laughs> so what is it? All right, Jeremy, you said it's not a feeling. It's not a buzz. It's not all the commotion. It's not putting holes in the wall. It's not chucking hymnals or jumping in a baptistry, yeah. or I've literally seen people go run to the bathroom, grab toilet paper, and throw toilet paper across her. Guys, I've been there. My, uh, my uncle's mother, who was 94, was in that service and got gashed across the head, bleeding from her forehead for toilet paper. Don't tell me you were full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Unless God was just really picking on the poor old woman. <laughs> Acts 1.8, here's how you get evidence of the Holy Ghost. But you shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall be witnesses unto me. The Holy Ghost is going to make you a bold witness. One of the things you'll see in a Pentecostal church that in, in Azusa Street, and you'll find it common now in Baptist churches, is running the aisles. They called it the Jericho March. Uh, and it was spontaneous. The, church, the, the Holy Spirit took control of their emotions, and they couldn't control themselves. Hey, listen, I've run aisles. And I can tell you, every time I did, I knew exactly what I was doing. And I, listen, in a good heart, I just wanted to be a part of something big. You know, I wanted to be a part of it. It was exciting. You go to a football game, you're like, yeah, get them, rip their head off, kill them. You know, I, I have complete control of my emotions. And maybe every once in a while, it's okay to act crazy. But hey, acting crazy, when someone points to that and says, that's evidence of the Holy Ghost, and eh, hold on, back it up. You want to act like a lunatic, that's fine. But say, hey, I was just having a good time. Don't point to it and say that was the Holy Ghost because you're pointing to something God never said. How does the Bible say how to have church? Nehemiah chapter 8. In verse 8 it says, So they read the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. If you're not giving the sense and causing people to understand the reading, you didn't preach. So just because you got up there and took a verse and took a fit does not mean you gave the sense and gave uh, the word of God distinctly. That's how we ought to have our service. These things where the worship service or the singing takes control of the entire services and pushing pushes the preaching outside the window, pushes the Word of God outside the window, yeah. is the exact opposite of old-time religion. Yeah. Look at, you're reading old-time religion in Nehemiah chapter 8. Amen. It's an emphasis on the Word of God. 